For Singapore's Olympic champion, Joseph Schooling has announced his retirement from competitive swimming. He calls time on a glorious career that saw him break an Olympic record, beat the legendary Michael Phelps and earned podium finishes at all major games. In a special sit-down interview with CNA's Alif Amsha a day before retiring, the 28-year-old says he's focusing now on growing his swim school to help develop the next generation of champions in the pool. It comes a time where everyone has to flip the page, turn a new chapter, and this is my time to do that. This is my official retirement. With those words, Singapore's beloved sporting son bids farewell to an illustrious swimming career, a whirlwind journey that took him to Olympic glory and placed Singapore on the world sporting map. We have been planning this. It has been in the back of my mind for quite some time. I was ready to do something else. I didn't get the excitement that I had waking up at four years old. I was still grinding through the possibilities of making it to Paris. I'd always told myself that I'd finish uh, when I was 29. I believe that this changes for the better. And my time just came a bit earlier than expected. And having to change that identity, um, change that perception, change the routine, it is pretty taxing. Um, it is pretty scary. But at the same time, as athletes, I think it's important not to put your entire identity around your sport. And that's when you start honing in other skills. And when one chapter closes, another chapter opens, right, Joe? Absolutely. So what future plans do you have now that you're putting the competitive days behind? First things first on the business side, right? Finance and sports. I'm getting to the VC space on the swim school, try to grow my swim school as much as possible, teach kids to be water safe. But I want to give back to the sporting society. I don't want to be, I don't want to vanish. I think there's a lot that I can offer. And there are a lot of hurdles that I've had to overcome along with my parents and team, which I can impart on the younger athletes. The whole goal is to make sure that they can go further than the previous generation. And if time is of essence, if they can understand this knowledge earlier, quicker, why not? And even as he steps into new beginnings, Schooling says he'll look back at his historic 2016 triumph in Rio de Janeiro fondly, just like it was yesterday. During the medal ceremony, I was having a good time with Michael and taking pictures, making a walk around, and he asked, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, dude, I don't know, I'm, I'm going to go sleep. I'm, I'm beat, man, I'm tired. He's like, he looked at me and smiled, and he's like, nah, you're not going to sleep. He was right. I didn't sleep that night. After the Olympics, we can see the effect sports has on bringing a nation together, all the celebrations, the mood, um, like the mood people are in. I didn't expect that personally. It was a huge eye opener. But I hope that shows everyone how big winning at that stage can do for our country. But I do believe that we have a lot more room to grow. So let's use that as a springboard to get to where we want to be. And for the man who loves being first, he hopes his successes will leave a lasting impact on future generations. I still am competitive. You can't, you can't put that behind. You just got to channel that competitiveness into a different, different realm, a different space. Someone said to me, um, people are going to remember you not for your achievements, not for your accomplishments, but how you made them feel. And while your achievements will give you that platform to inspire change and to affect others, I do believe the legacy I'd like to leave is you can achieve anything you can if you set your mind to it. Don't, don't ever let anyone tell you you can't do it. As Joseph Schooling announces his retirement from competitive swimming, Alif Amshar looks back at his career highs over the past decade. 12 August 2016, the pinnacle of Singapore's sporting history. The nation watched with bated breath as Joseph Schooling, then only 21, went up against the world's best in Rio de Janeiro in the 100-metre butterfly event. 50.39 seconds later, he had smashed the Olympic record and became Singapore's first Olympic gold medalist. And he did so in style leaving three of the world's best swimmers at the time settling for joint silver, including childhood idol Michael Phelps. 
Back home, Schooling's victory enthralled the nation. Singapore's favourite sporting son received a triumphant homecoming as scores of fans gathered at Changi Airport before dawn. Thousands stood lined the streets when he went on a victory parade on an open-top bus a few days later. He was mobbed everywhere he went, from malls to his alma mater ACS Junior and his neighbourhood Marine Terrace Market. He was also formally honoured in Parliament. At the 2018 Asian Games, he brought home yet another two goals, adding to his breakthrough win at the previous edition in Incheon. He also became the first Singaporean to land on the podium at the World Championships, winning bronze in both 2015 and 2017, as well as clinching the country's first swimming medal at the Commonwealth Games, taking silver in 2014. At the SEA Games, he's bagged more than 30 medals, mostly golds. That includes five straight wins in the 100-metre butterfly, a streak stretching from 2013 to 2021. With such a career, some may argue that perhaps for Singapore, there may never be another Joseph Schooling. But the champ himself is making sure young swimmers can continue to dream. Our tributes pouring in for Joseph Schooling, they laud the impact he has made on sports and on Singapore over the years. Prime Minister Lee Hsien Loong commented on Schooling's announcement on Facebook, thanking him for flying Singapore's flag high. In a Facebook post, President Thaman Shamagaratnam says schooling showed Singaporeans what it means to have the hunger to excel and to go beyond what others think we are capable of, as well as make our own dreams come true. Deputy Prime Minister Lawrence Wong says schooling has shown that people can pursue a different pathway based on their purpose and interest and excel at the highest levels. Speaking on the sidelines of a sports scholarship event, Culture, Community and Youth Minister Edwin Tong says schooling will be remembered not for his medals, but for the belief he has given others. But I think there's a lot more that he can give. He obviously knows how to win. He knows how to come back from defeat and from difficulty. And I think this is something that he is uh, very keen to give back into sports. And something that I've been talking to him about for some time now. For some years, on and off, we, we chat about it. Most recently, over the weekend, when he was preparing for today. The local swimming fraternity says schooling has broken the glass ceiling at the Olympics adding that his success and expertise will pave the way for more pool success to come. The guy has so much um, experience, not only just in the local scene, but also in the global scene as well. And definitely, if, if, he is, if he's able to and he's willing to, we will be able to, to tap on that experience to make things better for, for the, the athletes. Um, definitely, I, I, I believe that he has so much potential in him to make... Uh, an impact on the global level um, in leadership roles as well. When you look at a new talent coming through, uh, they can look to him as a source of inspiration. Uh, especially, you know, for Joseph, I think he can play such a vital role in coming into the association to help in terms of mentorship, uh, ambassadorship as well. Even as Joseph Schooling draws the curtains on his competitive swimming career, his mother believes that he has opened a world of possibilities for children who dare to dream. Mrs May Schooling says that parents play a crucial role. Alif Amshah, once more. How do you feel? Oh, very happy. <laughs> Hi, Liz. She was there every step of the way, as her son Joseph Schooling broke sporting barriers time and time again. Now, as he moves on away from competitive swimming, she looks at him with the same pride. He's going on to further things. Um, I'm glad to see that he's got a good head on his shoulder. And uh, I think he's matured very well. And let's see what he can do next. I'm sure he can do a lot more for everybody, the sports scene, everybody else. We started sort of a charity, but we haven't done anything yet because he was not available. And uh, we will hope to try and help other people. The only thing I can say is she says her son's journey to Olympic glory has been one filled with passion and dedication, not just for Joseph, but for the whole family. We have always discussed things. And whatever he wants to do, we will definitely support. Even going to the US, it was this 13-year-old boy who came to me and said, 
Mom, I have to go. You know, I said, but you're so young, right? But he says, if I don't go, I don't get to the Olympics. That's why Mrs. Kuling always has the same advice for parents. I always tell them, it's up to the kid, okay? I mean, you can only support. If the kid doesn't want it, you cannot force, right? If the kid wants it, they'll go for it, which is what Joseph did. So Joseph's schooling story is also the Colin and May schooling story. Um, you know, it's, it's all famously documented that, you know, they mortgaged the house for him, you know, at 14 years old to be able to go to the US. Who does that, right? But, you know, to be able to tread the path of, you know, that, that people do not generally go to, go to in order to achieve success, not only for himself or the country, right? Even though that, you know, funding at a point of time was very limited, the parents believed. And for all her son's achievements in the pool, which one stands out the most for Mrs. Schooling? Being a good son, that's the biggest achievement.